Hey, welcome to Let the Light In TV. I'm Craig Christofferson, and today we are here with the Fujifilm X-H2. This is a $2,000 uh, APS-C camera body. Now, we can't go into everything today because I am not going to release an hour long, you know, two hour long lecture on this camera body, but specifically what we're gonna cover here today is how this Fujifilm X-H2 camera body performs in regards to video. We'll do a kind of total review, but it's gonna be more video centric. So let us begin. Here are some of the headline features. It is coming with a 40 megapixel X-Trans 5 BSI imaging sensor. Now the X-H2 was released in September of 2022, and this particular sensor was released along with it in the exact same month. This is a brand new sensor that Fuji has rolled out. In fact, the only Fuji bodies with this sensor are the X-H2 and the X-T5. Now the X-H2 is capable of 8K video at 30 frames per second, 30p, 10-bit 422 Apple ProRes or ProRes HQ or even ProRes LT. And in order to record that much data and the speed at which you need to record it, the memory slots on this camera are CF Express Type B and UHS-2 SD card slots. More headline features. It has up to seven stops of internal body image stabilization, up to seven stops of IBIS. Uh, its max shutter speed is one 180,000th of a second. Uh, and that is capable with the electronic shutter, not the mechanical shutter. It has up to 13 plus stops of dynamic range with F-Log2, and it can externally record ProRes RAW or Blackmagic RAW through the HDMI, which is a full HDMI port, not a mini HDMI port. And so this thing is, uh, spec-wise, it's a bit of a beast when it comes to capturing video footage in Supreme quality. One more uh, cool feature that I want to throw out about this can camera that I want to advertise about it. Um, this is actually in regards to photo, even though I said this would be a video centric review. It has pixel shift multi shot. This is an other Fujifilm X series first. And this is a method that the camera uses where it can generate a 160 megapixel raw file. Now what it does to do this is that it records 20 frames and it shifts the sensor by 0.5 pixels each frame. And so the resulting images are automatically combined into one DNG raw file, which can be output to your desired file format using a suitable raw processing software. Now onto the camera body kind of more specifically itself, the camera feels great in hand. Some of the other APS-C bodies out there are certainly a lot smaller. Um, if you've been watching videos from this channel, you'll know that uh, a lot of my reviews are done on the Sony a6600, which is a smaller body. This Fujifilm body definitely feels bigger. It feels more like uh, the Sony a7 IV or a7 V, like that kind of size. It's, it's a bigger body, but it's, I feel at least from my hand size, that it's very comfortable. The body design is great. Uh, ergonomically. All right, let's talk about the X-H2 and video. So the 40 megapixel APS-C sensor can produce up to 8K video. So, you know, let's, let's stop there for a second. I mean, that's incredible. 8K 10-bit video. This is very, very impressive. However, let's bring that kind of technical stat sheet into the real world and think about this for a second. Because on one hand, 8K video is going to obviously, you know, create a lot of excitement. Oh my word, you know, the, the quality that you can get out of this camera when it comes to video is gonna be insane. And, you know, yes, absolutely, a 40 megapixel 8K video camera body uh, should make every anybody get, uh, get a little excited. You know, you're thinking about purchasing it, you're thinking, you know, uh, I'm gonna be able to future-proof myself for quite a few years to come if I purchase this. However, there is one thing I wanna dig into. How useful is it? And the answer to that 
kind of depends on what I'm going to say, two different things. One, what is your budget? Two, what is your profession or how much are you into photography slash videography? Um, if you aren't, you know, starting off with the profession, if you aren't really working seriously within the realm of video, you don't really need to worry about 8K. As simple as that. I'm sorry, I know it's exciting, but you don't really need 8K. Let's go back to the point about your budget. It's one thing to invest in the Fuji X-H2 and buy the camera body, but it's another thing to make full use of it. See, if you go out and you shoot in 8K quality, unless you have the proper tools, you're not actually going to be able to take advantage of it. You may say, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Shoot 8K video, how can I not take advantage of that? I'm talking about the fact that it really comes down to your video editing software. So personally, I use the free version of DaVinci Resolve. That's what I edit on. The free version of DaVinci Resolve can only edit up to 4K videos. The free version has the following limitations. The maximum timeline resolution is 4K UHD. That's uh, 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second. That's the, that's the max timeline resolution it can hold. The free version of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it can only export up to 4K UHD, UHD. It cannot export 4K DCI. It cannot export uh, 8K quality footage. So unless you go and buy DaVinci Resolve Studio, which by the way is 295 US dollars, you're not gonna be able to take full advantage of the 8K video that the X-H2 can possibly produce. Your other option when it comes to video editing software is Adobe Premiere Pro, which as of right now, you are able to get a monthly license for it for the price of 22 US dollars. So that's certainly a cheaper option. And then finally, if you are a Mac user, then you would be more looking into potentially uh, Final Cut Pro, which is available for $299. So if you're going to shoot an 8K, I'm just trying to make you aware that there's gonna be a little bit of extra investment necessary in order to actually deal with that footage. If you don't wanna pay for anything more than simply the X-H2 camera body, just shoot in 4K. 4K is beautiful, it looks good. Um, <laughs> it does the job, all right? 8K video can be recorded for up to 240 minutes. This is 10-bit 422 ProRes footage recorded internally on a CF Express Type B card. 12-bit raw footage can also be recorded through the Type A HDMI, the large HDMI socket, uh, to a compatible external recorder. Now, this camera is not going to be uh, a great camera in terms of fast-moving action type video. You will get rolling shutter. However, if what you are going to shoot is going to remain rather still or is predictable in its path and it's not juddery, it's not uh, you know darting back and forth or anything, then you're gonna be okay. So for example, I was tracking you know birds in flight or birds climbing up a, a tree branch and that's something that I could predict. You can see the motion about to happen and you can see the path that the subject is about to travel in. And so in those instances, the footage looked fine but if you're going to shoot something that's going to be you know snappy less predictable kind of back and forth type thing there is going to be rolling shutter that does happen on the xh2 let's talk about fujifilm film simulations and video something that fuji is very well known for especially when it comes you know to the mass hype the past couple of years of the x100v um it's known for their film simulations now, of course, this is mostly thought about within the realm of photo, but these film, film simulations are also available on Fuji's video mode. And so the X-H2, it boasts 13 different film simulations, each one providing a unique way in how it deals with color, how it processes color. If you want more information on these 13 Fujifilm film simulations and how they look, then you can click on the link here above and that's going to, I'm gonna give you an overview of what they look like, what they're gonna do with colors, and I'm gonna provide a lot of different visual examples in that video 
uh, for you to browse through. So you can really grasp how each film simulation looks like if you wanna check that out. Again, there was the link, probably gone by now. Cool additional features of the X-H2. So you can purchase, uh, it's an op optional purchase, something called a VFT XH file transmitter to access remote recording. Why are you telling me this, you may ask. Um, if you want basically a really high quality live streaming setup, this add-on allows you to control up to four XH2S or four uh, XH2 camera bodies at the same time from a browser. So that, if you are interested in creating, you know, a, a beyond this world quality live stream setup, then that option is available for you. Another cool little feature is the uh, before mentioned seven stop in body image stabilization system. This, this is unreal. It is unreal. Uh, you know, wide angle lenses are naturally, you know, pretty able to stabilize, but where the problem comes in is whenever you get into that telephoto range, right? Every single movement is so amplified because of our narrow area of force or of focus. But when it comes to handling uh, very large focal lenses, you know, I had the 200 millimeter Fujifilm uh, lens attached to the X-H2 and I was actually able to handhold shoot and get completely usable footage, like good footage, handholding 200 millimeter lens on the X-H2 because of this seven stop in body image stabilization system. I mean, you know, we're talking about a really a, a very heavy lens and after, you know, 20 minutes of shooting the wildlife that is around me. You know, the arm starts to get a little shaky, starts to get a little heavy, but the in-body image stabilization system really held it all together. And so some footage at the focal length, I, you know, I'm gonna admit, it was kind of like the footage came off of being on a boat, right? A little up and down and up and down. It was bobbing up and down, just, you know, I'm, I'm breathing, I'm moving. And so some of the footage was like that. However, uh, the vast majority of the footage that I did shoot at that 200 millimeter focal length was completely usable. Uh, if it had a little bit of motion, then in DaVinci Resolve, I just put a little bit of stabilization on it and it made it usable once again. So the image stabilization in this X-H2 is very impressive. The X-H2 can also uh, continually record for up to 160 minutes at 25 degrees Celsius. That can be extended to 240 minutes. You know, I said 240 minutes uh, earlier. That can be extended if you purchase an optional XH2 clip-on fan. And so basically the way that that operates is the, uh, the LCD screen flips out and then that fan goes into the place of where that screen kind of closes in and, and stores itself. So when recording up to 4K quality, the XH2 is able to increase the focal length of any lens with the camera's two time digital zoom. So that is also available for you. The D-pad has certain quick functions uh, appointed to its buttons. So by default, this is what it is. Uh, if you press the up button of the D-pad, then nothing is done. If you press right on the D-pad, that's going to cycle subject detection on and off. It does not cycle through the various subject, subject detection modes. It just simply turns it on and off. If you press the down button on the D-pad, this is gonna change the performance level of the camera. And if you press left on the D-pad, then that's gonna cycle through the 13 film simulations that are available on this camera body. Talk about connectivity ports. Uh, it has the microphone, headphones, and a full-size HDMI socket, as well as a USB-C uh, port which you can use for charging or getting your files off of your memory cards. Autofocus. I have um, mixed feelings about the autofocus and just so you understand where I'm coming from for reference I'm coming from the Sony platform which in my personal opinion it's comparatively better in achieving quick and accurate focus. I like the Sony system better when it comes to autofocus. I think it's, I think it's better. Uh, the X-H2 has a bunch of different 
subject detection modes. So of course it has, you know, your face and your eye, uh, whether you're wearing glasses or a face mask or anything like that, it'll still uh, track the eye. It has animals, it has cars, it's got uh, motorbikes and bikes, it's got airplanes, it's got birds, it's got trains, it's got a bunch of different subject detection modes in order for the autofocus to operate optimally. Now the X-H2, again, it was released in September of 2022. And while it has many incredible features, the autofocus was sometimes, I would say, disappointing. Now, before I begin to harp on it, I do want to clarify and state right now that in general, the autofocus was accurate, it was reliable, and it put in a good performance overall. Now, let's get into some little troubles that I had. So first of all, we have this bird on this tree or this tree dance and the autofocus is tracking it. You know, it's impressive, but the, whenever the bird disappears behind that tree branch, then the autofocus kind of jumps away. It doesn't uh, kind of hold focus in that one area waiting for the bird to, you know, come back into play. It just kind of takes off. Um, there's another example of there were geese flying in the sky. And I, this is again with the 200 millimeter lens. And so I point at the geese and it just kind of focus hunts. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out, and then it just gives me uh, AF error on the screen. So it's like, man, that's kind of disappointing. You know, this is a camera that was just released. Uh, I'm using, you know, a, a $2,000 camera body with a $5,000 lens. Surely this combination should be able to pick some simple geese uh, flying through a, a plain blue sky. Um, so it focus hunted and didn't give me uh, any result. Now, you know, I readjusted, came back, got the geese, uh, no problem, quick, accurate, and it, and it tracked them throughout the sky. Now, you know, the, the geese didn't move any closer, they didn't move any farther away, they're at the same distance. Why didn't it work the first time? I don't know, but it's, it's kind of disappointing that it didn't, um, especially when it comes to the price point of the equipment that I was using. Uh, again, you know, these are several instances where the autofocus failed me. There's another couple of examples that I can think of. I'm not going to go into them for time's sake today. There were instances where the, I feel like the autofocus failed or should have done better. Um, the Sony and the, and the Canon platforms have better autofocus. It's not that um, the X-H2 put in a bad performance, but there were instances where I felt it should have done better. Let's go into likes and dislikes of the X-H2. So here are some things that I do like. I really did enjoy the flip out and rotatable LCD screen. Uh, the info screen at the top of the X-H2 body, it doesn't necessarily provide any new information, but what makes it so nice is that it's just in a location where, you know, you just look at the top of the camera body and all that information is there in a font size that is clearly legible. Uh, doesn't matter the amount of daylight shining on the screen. It is always legible, quick um, reference for your camera settings, shutter speed, um, you know, what kind of footage you're recording, 4K, 8K, 1080p, all this kind of stuff. It's all right there and at a glance and it's at a bigger font size than what you would find it at on the actual LCD screen. Um, so I just found it, you know, really useful. It's not any information that's different from what you can find on the LCD screen. It's just really helpful to look down and have all of that information there really quick. The quick menu, the Q menu, uh, you are able to customize what features are on the quick menu and you can change them around. You can also change how many uh, different features are on the quick menu. You can have 16, I think it's 16, eight and uh, four different things showing on the quick menu whenever you click it. However, I didn't find the quick menu to be necessarily that quick. So let me explain. I found it actually kind of annoying to operate. The D-pad and the joystick operate in the same way. You can use either one whenever you're going to select something on this Q menu screen. They work the exact same way. And when you are in the Q menu, kind of, you want to hit buttons that intuitively you feel are going to perform a certain function. So, you know, hit the Q button, 
the Q menu pops up and then you can either navigate with the joystick or the D-pad. Then whenever I get to what I want to select, um, perhaps this is because I'm coming from the Sony system, I want to either you know, hit down on the, or hit, uh, you know, in on the joy pad, or I want to hit the kind of okay menu button on the D pad to select that setting and go in and alter it. However, hitting that okay, hitting that middle button on either one actually just takes you out of the Q menu. The only way to adjust things in the Q menu is you hit Q, you go to the setting you want to adjust by using either the D-pad or the joystick, and then you have to do, you have to change the value of that setting on the dial. That is, at least from what I found, the only way you can adjust settings within the Q menu. Uh, again, I don't know if I'm the only one getting confused and frustrated by the Q menu, but that was just my experience. Uh, if you know a way to alter the way that the Q menu works, please let me know. I wasn't really able to find it in the menu system, but put it down in the comments. Help us out here. <laughs> all right, let's wrap it all up. There is all of the information as we've had uh, visual examples. We have a Fujifilm X-H2 released in September of 2022, and it's going to cost you 2000 US dollars. So overall, in conclusion, I think it's a, a great APS-C system for hybrid shooters, people who want to shoot both photo and video. And I think within the APS-C body, camera body realm, this is a fresh, new, very impressive camera body, which provides a bunch of different options to create incredible quality photo and video content. Um, the autofocus is uh, somewhat behind the Sony and the camera or Sony and the Canon platforms. But overall, you know, this really does th this is really updated with a bunch of bells and whistles that um, other APS-C bodies don't have. Ultimately, the choice is yours. This was a very video centric review of the Fujifilm X-H2. If you want a photo centric review, then here's a link to Dustin Abbott's channel. You can go, it's gonna link you directly to his review of the X-H2, so you can check that out for more information. If you'd like to purchase the X-H2, then the links are down below. Uh, whatever shop you wanna to go to, it is there and available for you. That is it. I hope today's video was informative. If it was, give it a like, consider subscribing. Have a wonderful day and let the light in.